because I wanted to come and see the vineyard from where the Ziraldo Prosecco is produced. So this is called the Friuli Venezia region, which is really where my family comes from, from Friuli. This particular region makes Prosecco, which has become very, very popular in uh, Canada and North America, all over the world for that matter. So I thought maybe it's time that I should get back here and make a little bit of Prosecco connection. You know, my, I always say that my Skin is Canadian, but my blood is Italian. So put more Prosecco in, it becomes even more Italian. Yesterday when we arrived, I met Abramo, who's the father, who's actually in the vineyard, and you know, he loves the vineyard, that's where he likes to work. So we had a great chat, he took me through the vineyard, showed me the Galera, the training system that's used, and the other thing he showed me was a couple problems that they're having here with the disease, and they actually don't even know what it is. Abramo said that this is a, a disease that they don't have a cure for. They don't even know what it is, they're studying it. And so this branch here, where you see the bunches are dry and the, the wood is dry, that's dead. So the idea is you cut it off here, and then this is a new one to replace it. That'll have fruit. Che percentuale c'è di malattia così nel vigneto? Ma diciamo un 5 10%. Yeah. 5 or 10% of the plants get the disease and the variety is glera, which is a tradition that's been here for thousands of years and all of the prosecco is made by law from glera, which is this vine. And from the vineyard, we walked around, checked everything out. We didn't dig a hole in the ground, but that's next. I'm going to check the terroir as they speak, the soil and the sort of situation with the climate. Then we're going to go and meet Fabio at the winery, and we'll go through the process of how the actual Prosecco is made in the Charmat tanks, and then we'll go and we'll actually, hopefully I'll get a chance to actually bottle some of this year's vintage. Following the harvest, we take the grapes to the winery to be pressed and begin the fermentation process in the Charmat tanks, which you see behind us. The actual fermentation takes about eight days, and then after that it's just a question of racking the wine regularly to take out the sediment as it settles to the bottom, so it's done as natural as possible. As I was explaining about the Appalachian, so there's DOC, then there's DOCG, and this is Cartice. So what's amazing is when you smell the aroma from the DOCG, it's more fruit aromas. And then the Cartice, it's more um, flowers. So a very distinct difference in the aroma and in the taste. And it's really all about terroir, which is the secret to great wines, because they're made in the vineyard. So the sediment, as it clarifies, it's assisted by adding bentonite. And what bentonite is crushed seashells. And what it does is attracts the colloids that are floating around. And then once it's finished after the 40 days, it goes through yet a very uh, fine light filtration in marble powder, which is pretty cool. And that's the last filtration, then it goes into the bottle. The wines are then bottled under pressure to maintain the freshness of the wine, which reflects the character and the terroir of the region. It is then labeled and ready for the marketplace. From Verona, we head north about 20 kilometers to visit my friend Sandro Boscaini, president of Mazzi Agricola in Valpolicella. Sandro is often referred to as Mr. Amarone, and from whom I learned the art of a pasimento. Sandro, piacere di essere qui. È mio piacere, con un amico friulano come te, 
tanti anni, siamo 40 anni che siamo amici quando sei arrivato alla prima io, io volta. Io penso di sì, 40 anni o anche forse qualcuno anche di, di più. più, anche di più. Quando sì, hai sì. cominciato con quella baracchetta, sì, 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 che io dico f... cos'è questo poveretto? <ride> Ah, piano piano, sai, per quello sono venuto qui per imparare come di fare, perché così io sapevo, sapevo di piante, non sapevo di vino. Allora, certo. Ti ringrazio per tutto l'aiuto. No, non c'è, sai, noi del vino dobbiamo avere sempre una cosa in mente, che non sappiamo niente rispetto a quello che sa il mondo del vino. Il mondo del vino ha migliaia di anni, noi quando ne abbiamo tanti, io sono vecchio, non arriva neanche 80, cosa facciamo? We're standing in the heart of wine country in northern Italy. We're actually in Valpolicella, which is just north of Verona, which most of you know is famous for Romeo and Juliet. Yesterday I had the pleasure of interviewing both Sandro Boscaini, who is the president of Mazi Winery here in Valpolicella, Sandro and I talked about the philosophy that they instill here in their wine production. And then we spoke with Raffaello uh, Boscaini, the son, and he explained to us the process of a passimento. A passimento, as was explained by Raffaello, is the harvesting of the grapes and then allowing them to dry. And about 30% of the water is removed to help concentrate the flavors and all of the uh, essences of the grapes here, the three grape varieties that are well known in the region. The purpose for that is because in cool climate regions like here, not unlike we have uh, back home in Niagara, sometimes it's difficult to get the full ripeness of the fruit. So by picking the grapes and then letting them dry for about three months in uh, these beautiful racks made of bamboo, It gives the wine uh, or the winemaker the ability to concentrate those flavors and give you a really very full bodied and high alcohol wine because many of the Amarones are 15 to 16 percent. And in talking to Andrea Del Cien, the winemaker, he is really focused on the ability of that apacimento process to make a very premium wine. Last night at dinner, we had a bottle of Reserva. Costarera, I can only describe it as, a, as an experience. It was unbelievably concentrated with magnificent aromas in the nose. We had it with a local steak and it was, it was just magnificent. After I had the opportunity to interview Sandro and Raffaello Boscaini, who are the proprietors of Mazi, I then was taken by them over to the other property that they manage and I met Contessa Massimila Serego Alighieri. She is the 21st generation descendant of the great famous Dante Alighieri. So now could you tell us how this became part of the Mazi viticulture? Uh, well, we are still here and we are producing wine since uh, I think ever because uh, Pietro, when Pietro bought the first land, uh, he bought uh, due pezze di terra, so to agricultural land, and agriculture in 1300 was wine yes. in Valpolicella and is even now wine. The uh, meeting with Masi was uh, more recent, of course, uh, and uh, was in the 70s of the past uh, century, so in 1970s, around there, and uh, uh, we are neighbors, uh, and uh, Masi for us uh, distributes uh, and follow all the technical part of the production of our wine. And for them, we are the historical estate, the historical chateau, and so the historical brand of all the team and group that Mazi is. We are in Fagagna, which is in Friuli, and it's the town where my mom and dad were born. In 2004, I was given a cittadinanza onerario. So the next day, I was invited by Count Asquini, who actually owns the castle, his family ancestors owned this castle. And he said, would you like to come and see our archives? And there I discovered that they were making picolit, this very rare variety, which is the grapevines you see here. 
And Picolite is a very unique grape variety that has maybe five or six berries on each bunch. So it kind of went out of tradition and they stopped making it way back in the 1700s. So when I saw that and they saw his family booklet and we can show you the book where it actually shows you that they were training the systems there and then they would make the wine, put it in hand blown Venetian glass, taken to Venice and then from Venice it went to czars of Russia, the King of Spain, the Pope, King of England. So I thought, wow, you know what, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to plant the vineyard back in its original place and that's what we've got here. From Fagania, we drove to the magical city of Venice. This is the Grand Canal and the Piazza San Marco Tower to the left. Below is the Squero di San Trovaso, one of the few remaining gondola builders in Venice. A Cappello del Doge, Sei Sestieri di Venezia, di Venezia divisi in Sestieri, Isola della Giudecca, Ponte di Alto e Canal Grande. È il simbolo di Venezia. Tutto assieme, tutto, tutto assieme. Eh, questo fatto, questo è tutto a mano. a mano. Sono due mesi di lavoro per costruire una e sette tipi di legno diversi. 